Hello world, my name is Tony B. Conscious, better known as the Ghetto Van Gogh. I started in a city by the name of Seattle, Washington. Matter of fact, really quick, my mom went to school with Jimi Hendrix. I graduated from the same high school. Now ain't that kind of cool? Now let me go deeper, let me explain. I grew up in the generation, maybe right before or during Kurt Cobain. I left Seattle and I started traveling to Los Angeles. But first I stopped in the Bay. I came here before I ever got to LA. I knew I was talented and I could entertain. I was like, oh my God, I love to rhyme. I love to do art and I love to teach. Where can I go and make money? Venice Beach. So I went down to Venice Beach and the first day I got there, I only had one spray paint can and I think maybe a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. But I started painting on them, I went to work. After a while, everybody knew me and everybody started bringing all their clothes to me. They were like, yo, paint this, yo, paint that. And even after I painted it, they would still come back. And then all of a sudden I really went bananas. I said, why am I only painting clothes? I need to start painting canvas. But then after a period of time, I realized Venice Beach was getting gentrified. I was like, okay, let me think for a minute or two. I came back to the Bay, went to Berkeley on Telegraph, and that's where I started my display. I started taking all my quotes. I started making art that was dope. Started giving kids hope. So fresh and clean, you could call me soap. Hey, so spiritual, you could call me the Pope. I was doing my thing. Then of course, COVID came and that really hurt me. So then I said, for heaven's sake, with nowhere else to go, my friend who's another artist said, you gotta go to San Francisco. So I was like, hold up, wait. Where can I go sell my art? Oh, on the hate. I came here and now everybody in the neighborhood thinks my art is great. Hate Street is where I should have been the whole damn time. I love it here. It's amazing. They love my style and it has a history. So when people see my art, they all start to smile. And that's my story, the best I can tell it. My art, I just put it out. I don't even try to sell it. I just show them the most beautiful part of themselves. And they come over here, love the vibe, and don't want to go nowhere else. I play it very low, but I try to play jazz. I think jazz and art go so good together. Most of the neighbors walk by and say, oh my God, we love your music, we love your everything. I have a few people who, who I think it's to their benefit to not have me here. And gentrification and redlining of black people at one time, Hate Street used to have a lot of black people who lived here. And there's hardly any, there's none. Um, virtually none, maybe I, I can count them on one hand, the black people who live around here. More than me just trying to paint something that they're gonna buy, I'm trying to tell the story and leave a legacy for those who were here before me. And that, I think, is the pushback. Why I'm getting the pushback is because they see I don't use drugs, I don't use marijuana, I don't use shrooms, I don't drink, I don't do any of that. I'm clear-minded, I'm intellectual, I'm talented as hell, and I stand, I stand on what I do. In order to be a street artist most of the time, you either gotta live in your van or live on the street. I make a little money here, but I save every penny. And I still could not afford to get a place in this, in, in this city. I've been living in my van for 10 years. And I keep my energy powerful and positive and my, and my light bright because that's my true nature. And if I let them distract me, they'll take me away from my light. I can't let them take me away from my light regardless. Even if I can see through them, I just smile. I smile at him. Martin Luther King said, darkness cannot chase out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot chase out hate. 
Only love can do that. So, I got to keep on giving that love. L-O-V-E, living on vibrational energy. I don't just find a quote that I think is going to sell something. These quotes are all internalized and mean something to me. So if I can't talk to you and enlighten you, let me give you a painting that talks to you. That's why I call it optical yoga. Yoga is about stretching. So I'm stretching your mind with my art. And that's how my form of communication. Ah, Yeah, this is what I do all day, is I try to communicate with the children. I mean, it's all about building. I mean, I'm trying not only to educate you, I'm trying to give you art that you can relate to because I don't hate you. Peace out. This is Tony B. Conscious. I'm not being obnoxious, but I got this. Look at how I rock this.